Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very delighted to be here. Um, as you've mentioned, my name is Hanan Ahmed Al Mulla. I work with the Dubai Police as a uh, DNA um, forensic analyst. And today I will be sharing my uh, validation study of the rapid hit ID system by Thermo Fisher for rapid DNA analysis. Uh, uh, and two of its available systems. So we have ACE for the reference buckle samples, and then we also have uh, Intel for evidence samples. So my presentation will be split into two main parts. First, I will give a basic introduction on the instrument, their software, and uh, the basic setup and use of the system. And then I will go into the results of the validation for both uh, reference and casework samples. So let us start by answering the question of what is a rapid hit ID system. So basically it is a rapid DNA analysis workflow. So instead of working for a couple of days in your laboratory to analyze a forensic DNA sample, what you can do with this instrument is only spend 19 minutes or one hour and a half uh, to do it, to get the profile. And on top of that, it is a fully automated system. It is very user-friendly. It is already uh, FBI approved and also approved by the National DNA Index System or the NDIS. And the chemistry that it uses is Global Filer Express, which is already the chemistry that most laboratories around the world use. And as you can see in the picture here of our setup, uh, the setup is very um, simple. You can do this not only in a lab, but also in an office, for example, in a police station on any desk surface. On the left hand side here, you can see the instrument and it is very compact. It does not take a lot of space. And in addition to that, you have the laptop that has the softwares that you require. And you turn on the machine only once, which is when you install it in your place. And then after that, you can leave it open for 24 hours uh, day after day. And to show you clearly how to use it, I have a demonstration video here. So the machine is already turned on for you. And then the first thing you will do is log in with your credentials. So this can happen with um, by many things. So first of all, you have biometrics. There is a fingerprint scanner at the bottom of the screen here. And on the top of the screen in the corner, as you can see here, there's a camera for facial recognition. And you can also use the keypad in the screen to enter your PIN number or your password. And then you take the sample that you want to take. In this case, it is an example of a reference buckle swab, which means that the cartridge that you will use is ACE instead of Intel. And uh, the next step is that you want to enter the name of your sample. So again, you can do this e either using the keypad on the screen by manually typing the name of your sample, or you can use the same camera to scan the barcode that you have in your sample if you have one. So this is the ACE cartridge. You close the lid and then for both ACE and Intel, you insert it into the same slot here in the machine. And then immediately the 90 minute timer will start. You can come back after one hour and a half. And then when you come back, you will see a very primary result. So on the screen here, you will see a, a green tick if the profile was successful, the run. So that, that means you will have a single sourced, well-balanced um, profile, full profile. If you have a yellow tick, that means that the profile is there. It just needs um, uh, some minor reviewing by a forensic expert. And if the fail had, uh, and if the run had failed, you will see a red X. And comparing this workflow to the normal DNA analysis workflow, it is very compressed. So in the cartridge itself, you have tiny chambers and spaces where the PCR and cell lysis solutions are present. So these happen here. And then in the primary cartridge at the bottom of the instrument, uh, the DNA fragment detection happens here. And the primary cartridge is enough for about 100 runs already. So these are the two ACE and Intel cartridges. You can see that um, from the get-go, they look very similar. 
and they're only color coded with different labels. And this is very convenient because this means that you can use for any types of sample that you have the same instrument. The ACE works with reference buckle swaps and the Intel works with um, evidence items of abundant amount of DNA, which includes basically blood and saliva samples, such as blood stains, cigarette ends, swabs from drinking containers uh, and chewing gum, in addition to other abundant DNA uh, evidence items like face masks and uh, hair. And also um, some studies worked with bones and profiles were good as well with that. So let us talk about the two softwares that come with the rapid hit ID system. So first of all, you have the rapid link software, which is a data management software. And for example, if you have access as an administrator, what happens is that every single instrument in your region, um, the information for them will be centralized to you. So in this screenshot, you can see here the rapid link software, you can see a map that is similar to Google Maps where every single instrument that is connected to you uh, in your specific region or area is pinpointed on the map. And you can see which user has access to which instrument and you can edit that if you want. You have the bar graphs at the bottom of the map here that shows um, the total number of runs per instrument or per day. And you can track that. And uh, on top of that, if you're a forensic um, uh, expert and DNA analyst, you'll have access to four applications that are present in the software, which you can see down here below. And this enables you to do many things with the samples that you have just run in the instrument. So first of all, you can do, uh, if you have a database that you uh, that is connected to your system, you can do match searches, you can do staff elimination if you have a staff elimination database. What you can do also here is familial and kinship analysis between the samples that you have run. And what's also very useful is that upon request, you can very quickly and very simply produce a final PDF report containing the results and the statistical figures of the analyses that you have requested. And the second software that we have is the gene marker software. So again, you will have access to this if you are a forensic uh, DNA expert. And this is basically equivalent to the gene mapper software that is used with uh, most um, capillary electrophoresis instruments that is used around the world. And because they are equivalent and very similar in use, this makes the gene marker HID software very simple to use. Of course, between the two softwares, there is some slight differences um, uh, in some vocabularies, for example, um, out of ladder and out of bin and other things. And uh, so when you have access to this software, you can like in GeneMapper, look at the raw profile, you can edit the profile, you can interpret and print the profiles that you want. And again, this is not accessible to the basic user who, for example, works in the police station, who has the instrument on his desk, who is not really authorized to interpret or even see the profile. So in both softwares, you have a very good level of user management and accessibility. A very good way to summarize this is by uh, using the expression sample in profile out system because it is that is in really the hands on time as an employee there is one minute or even less. And I have here a series of photos just to recap everything that I did in my lab. So first of all, you log in using the pin code and then you enter using the keypad the name of your sample. And then you put your swab into the cartridge, whether it is ACE or Intel. And as you can see here, you want, uh, in this example, I have a cotton swab with a wooden stick. And what you wanna do is you wanna cut the stick to fit the entire length of the chamber because the solution for cell lysis and PCR goes into the swab from the bottom. So when it does that, you don't want it to push the swab away from the solution. You want the solution to be integrated into the DNA sample. So you do that and then you can close the lid and then you insert it into the slot. The timer will start, you come back after one hour and a half. And then immediately in the rapid link software, you will see that your sample name is um, listed along with your previous runs. And then simply by clicking on the name of your sample, the gene marker um, software will open up immediately showing you the profile that you have. And that concludes the uh, instrument, their software and how to use and set it up. 
So now we have a four hour validation experiment for the for both ACE and Intel systems, we have our preliminary results. And we can start by looking at the uh, reference buckle samples. So we had 35 samples uh, from 19 donors. We did notice that one of the donors gave two samples that um, showed some outlier behavior. So we excluded one of them because the system I personally did for this is that I let them take the swaps by themselves rather than me doing it. Uh, and Right off the bat, you can see that the results here are quite good. So for each marker, what we did is we looked at the peak height ratios. So we looked at how balanced the two alleles are for each marker in all of the samples. And we can see that the they range from 78% all the way to 92%, which is a um, very excellent result because if you compare that to the cutoff that um, most laboratories use for their normal DNA workflow, which is 60%, you can see that this is uh, very much above it. The maximum peak height ratios range from 98% to 100%. And if you look at the minimum uh, peak height ratios, you can see that out of all 20, uh, 22 loci, only four showed at least one sample that uh, had a slight imbalance at around 50%. We also calculated the peak height ratios uh, in addition to the average peak height this time per sample. So you can see it for all of our 35 samples. Here are the two that showed um, uh, some outlier behavior. And uh, also you can see that similarly, the peak height ratios are quite high compared to the 60% uh, cutoff. So here you can see it's between 75% to about 90%. And the majority of the data for the average peak height goes between 500 RFUs and 3,500 RFUs. And these, if you compare the 90 minute uh, rapid DNA analysis to the normal workflow uh, that inclu includes many detailed steps, this is actually um, quite good results. And uh, seeing the profiles that I've uh, run in the system, uh, the profiles were very, uh, very good. So um, I do want to note that I tried to work with refer reference blood samples, but no profile showed up. So uh, the ACE samples uh, with the rapid hit ID system shows very promising results for the uh, reference samples. And then now we can continue to the Intel casework samples. As I've mentioned before, they are uh, recommended to be used on saliva and blood containing evidence items. So we did that for both instances. In saliva, we worked with cigarette ends, drinking uh, containers, including plastic water bottles and soda cans. For the chewing gum, we tried two things. We tried to either take a swab from the gum or cut a piece of the gum itself and put it into the cartridge. For the blood samples, we tried blood on different surfaces, blood stains, so wood, tile, cement, uh, tar road. And then we also did it on uh, fabrics. And with the fabric experiment, we uh, included a lot of variation. So first we um, compared cotton and denim. Uh, the idea behind this being that theoretically denim has the indigo dye, which is an inhibitor. We also tried two microliters of blood versus four microliters of blood. And then we also, like in the case of the chewing gum, either cut out the fabric itself and put it into the chamber or we took a swab of the blood and did it. And I do have to mention that the rapid hit ID system um, for the Intel case, for examples, is not yet recommended to be used on touch samples because even with the normal um, workflow of the DNA, we know that there are much weaker and more challenging samples to produce a full profile uh, for. But nonetheless, I still tried it. Previous studies uh, on other version, versions of the Intel samples worked with CAPS. And I also did personal items here, but I had several criteria to choose the personal items to work with the rapid DNA uh, analysis. So first of all, these items are personal, meaning that you would not expect a, mi a mixture to be there. You would expect it to be a single source profile. And the other criteria is that um, it is used frequently so that compared to other touched items, you would have 
uh, more amounts of DNA on that. And these personal items included a leather strap of a watch that was used for two weeks, a laptop uh, keyboard, a computer mouse, and a mobile phone. So here I have collected for you some pictures that I used um, with the different evidence items. So if you look here, these are the uh, pieces of paper cut from the cigarette ends. And to weigh them down to the bottom of the chamber, what I did is I used a lancet, which is basically a small needle with a plastic grip just to weigh it down to the bottom where the solution can reach it. And then we have the piece of gum here weighed down by its own weight. And this is the um, blood experiment on the different fabrics. So we have denim and cotton, we have two microliters, we have four microliters, and then we either took a swab, for example, to bypass the, inhibi the inhibition that you might find in the indigo dye, or we took a cutout of the fabric itself. And as you can see here, um, similar to the cigarette ends, I uh, use the lancet to weigh the fabric down to the bottom of the cartridge. The blood stain samples included those that were on tiles, on wood, on tar road, and on cement. And the one on the road, I just let that um, uh, quickly dry under the sun for only about 20 minutes. Okay, so let us start by looking at our results that we had for the drinking containers with regards to the saliva samples. So right off the bat, when you compare the results of Intel samples with the reference A samples, what you can see with the Intel is that you have a much greater variation in the data. So for example, here for the drinking containers, we had, as mentioned before, soda cans, three of them and three plastic water bottles. And you can see that the um, uh, PCAG ratios average between 25% and 100%, which is a great variation. And the uh, peak heights, uh, peak height average uh, went from about 1,000 to about 3,500, uh, which uh, generally showed uh, good profiles. But again, you can see the variations that is present here. And these are the results for the chewing gum. Again, we had three pieces of the gum itself. And then we had two swabs that were taken from the pieces of the chewing gum. Um, you can see that the same variation is present, but if you actually look closely at the data, you will see that um, the samples that have most of its markers above the 60% cutoff is actually the piece of the gum itself. And that the data points, uh, the majority of the samples that go under the 60% cutoff is actually uh, the swabs that are taken from the chewing gum. But even with this uh, variation, you can see that the um, uh, uh, average peak heights are still good. So it goes from about 1,000 to about 6,000 RFUs with some variation there. And if you split the data uh, more appropriately and compare, for example, the way we lifted the DNA from the gum. So if you have the swab here versus the piece of gum, you can see that uh, it is definitely much better to run the piece of gum. And the reason I did this comparison is that I heard that some laboratories would rather take a swab from the gum just to bypass some of the inhibiting chemicals that could be present in the gum itself. And you can see that for the pieces of gum, the RFUs go from around 2,000 to about 9,000, and that the variation is not even that big. Okay, so for the cigarette ends, um, for, in my personal experience, the cigarette ends showed the most unpredictable and the greatest variation in the data compared to all evidence item types. And I don't think it is, so as you can see here, it goes from about 20% uh, to 100% with regards to the peak height ratios. And you can see the variation that is present uh, in the average peak heights, even though generally the peak heights are good, starting from above 1,000 RFUs. But I don't think it was because of the nature of the cigarette ends itself. Uh, it was challenging for me to place the um, samples properly into the chamber because I had a challenge of getting a big enough piece of paper from the cigarette end that would contain enough DNA in it, but at the same time be small enough to uh, be put properly into the chamber. And I think that is where the challenge comes from because 
I've heard that other labs used different methods of uh, inserting their samples into the cartridge and their, uh, and their results were a bit be better than mine. And the way I got my results here is that in some instances, for example, the orange data point here, we had a very good full single, single source profile that, is, uh, that has its markers above 60% with the peak height ratios. But for some profiles, the, uh, the markers looked pretty weak with regards to its peak. But even with this variation, you can see that the um, average peak heights are still very good. They go above 1,000 to about uh, 3,500 RFUs. Uh, caps showed good profiles as well. So these are the uniform caps. Three of them were cloth. One of them was leather. So they are basically used five times, uh, five days a week, uh, hours on end. And um, most of the data, as you can see, also lies above the 60% cutoff. There is um, relatively some variation in the data, but the peaks are still good going uh, from above 2,000 to about 6,000 RFUs. And these are the results for the touched items. So like I said, the touched items are not really recommended yet for use with the Intel samples. Um, uh, I chose things that is frequently used and expected to show a single source profile, as you can see here. Um, uh, but we were still actually very surprised to see that we had a lot of partial profiles with the touched items, which was something that was not expected. And you can see that the variation here is not even as much. And the RFUs go from uh, 500 to about uh, 1500 RFUs. And there is a great variation of um, range in the peak height ratio going from about 20% to 100%. But what this actually showed us was that um, the Intel sample in the rapid hit ID system shows very good future promise to be used with touch items, especially with future development uh, on uh, specifically the touch items of evidence. Okay, now we can go to the blood on the fabric. So you can see here that also there is a variation in the results with the peak height ratios and also with the average peak heights. But again, this is because with the blood on fabric, we uh, used a lot of variation with the conditions. So we had two microliters of blood, four microliters of blood. We had cotton and denim. We took a cutout of the fabric. We took a swab. And that is why you see the variations here. Uh, it's good to know that even with the variation, the RFUs go from above 1,000 to about uh, 2,500, which is still good. And here is a more informative comparison. So if you compare the blood samples taken from cotton versus denim, you can see that there is really not much difference, which means that the system did not really um, uh, suffer from any inhibition from the indigo dye that comes with the denim. And similar to the chewing gum, if you compare using a cutout directly from the fabric placed into the chamber and taking a swab of the blood, we can see that it is much better to use a cutout. You can see that the RFUs go from about 1,000, excluding the uh, male alleles, to, about, to above 3,000 RFUs, and that the variation in the uh, data is not um, even that great. And with regards to bloods on surfaces, uh, they showed very, very, very good results as well. So generally with all of the um, evidence sample types, blood with regards to Intel samples showed the best and most reliable results, especially those in surfaces. So you can see here that the majority of the data for the peak height ratio um, falls above the 60% uh, cutoff. Uh, the five markers that show a single sample um, uh, with um, a peak height ratio slightly below 60% were actually the ones on cement and roads, so they're more exposed to outdoor environment versus the tile and wood. And you can see that the um, peak height, the average peak heights were uh, relatively higher. So it goes from about 1,000 to about uh, 4,500 RFUs with little variation in the data. Okay. 
So to conclude the study with regards to the intel samples, what we can say is that um, as, re as uh, recommended, it is used for blood and saliva samples. That is where it showed it be its best results, especially with blood. It uh, shows some future promise with touch items, again, with some criteria that you have to keep in mind when you choose the uh, evidence item to run uh, in your rapid hit IV system. And even though this is a fully automated uh, system, your role as a forensic DNA analyst is still crucial because you have a lot of decisions to make when using the system. Uh, how would you like to deal with your uh, sample? So for example, at a crime scene, if you have the choice to run a sample between the rapid hit ID system, which could be next to you in the crime scene um, or, um, versus running the sample in your central lab, you can ask yourself, do I have a backup of the sample? Can I lift an identical sample from the crime scene as a backup? Um, you can ask if um, you want to run the test on the rapid uh, ID system, rapid hit ID system, but then go back to the central laboratory and do some more confirmatory tests. You want to see if you might for now to get some more intelligence, uh, rapid intelligence for the investigation, if it would be enough for now to have a partial profile with enough number of markers that would cover some degree of statistical confidence um, to be used uh, for the investigation. And uh, also when the profile comes out, compared to the ACE reference, uh, you would need uh, your, um, expert opinion on the interpretation of the profile. Uh, it is very important to know that the rapid hit ID system is not meant to be used as a replacement of your central laboratory. It is meant to be used as an extension of it. So that means that you do not run uh, samples on the rapid uh, DNA analysis workflow to base crucial judgments upon, but you do that to quickly steer the um, investigation to the right direction. So to conclude, the uh, rapid hit ID system is a rapid 90 minute fully automated sample and profile out system. There is a very good um, uh, user management uh, availability here because you have your basic user who is not a DNA expert, who um, does not have access to the profile, who works, for example, in the police station and just run these samples into the instrument. You have the administrator who can oversee and manage all of the basic users. And then you have the forensic DNA expert who can look at the profiles and have access to the softwares and the applications. And again, this is an extension of the central laboratory uh, for forensic DNA analysis and a great investigative lead uh, in this regards. Um, finally, I would like to thank, uh, well, I'd like to thank you for having me and I'd like to thank Thermo Fisher Scientific UK and Integrated Gulf Biosystems uh, and my colleagues at Dubai Police for their great help with uh, the validation study that I've presented for you today. Thank you very much.